not enough to go after the terrorists. You also must go after those who harbor the terrorists. Hardened by the president's words tonight? Very much so. I thought it was a superb speech. I'll tell you something. I think we're all going to find that the American people are much tougher than some of the commentary tonight that I've heard would imply. And if you have the leadership that I think the president demonstrated tonight, and if we carry out the words he said, and we do in fact act and act hard against not only the terrorists but those who have housed them, I think we will find that we have struck a real blow for beginning the end of this terrorist tragedy that's taken over the world for so long. We won't win it all at once, but if we now really start to take seriously the words that the president said, both in terms of attacking the terrorists and those who mother them, I think we can begin to see this thing turning around. And I think the American people will be totally in support of that. Secretary Eagleburger, what is it that you've heard uh, from commentators or anyone else that made, uh, that, that perked your ear there that suggested the American people did not have the resolve or did not have the toughness to deal with this? Well, I, no, I, I don't want to carry it too far, but what I've heard is, you know, they're all shaken. Uh, it, it, there's some implications that this is, we're not going to sort this out too quickly. All I'm saying is whether we've been shaken or not, if you watched what went on in New York City today, and particularly the police and the firemen, but also average New Yorkers in the ways in which they responded to try to take care of each other, I was in fact very much impressed by their guts and their ability to to deal with these things in a rational way. And I think it showed a great deal about the city of New York, which has not always been my favorite place. And it also showed a great deal about the American people. And I think you're going to find that we are going to be, pre be really prepared to back the president all the way. Now, in this sense, I do think it's like Pearl Harbor, because it's Pearl Harbor that led us all to to come together to defend ourselves against the Japanese. I think this is Pearl Harbor in a sense in bringing us now to look at this terrorist issue as in fact we should look at it, which is if we don't deal with it now, it will be so much worse as the years go on. Secretary Eagleburger, thank you. It's good to talk to you again. If good I could just a, a second, one thing he said, of all of the images that we've seen in the 12 hours that we've been here, it is a scene of New Yorkers calmly evacuating the area, very slowly walking, uh, no panic, no screaming, helping one another that, that has stayed with us. Uh, it is not the most dramatic picture, but it is one of the most telling pictures we have seen about how people respond in moments of extraordinary crisis. Paula? I'll also tell you, Arian, the story that hasn't been told is, is the generosity of the spirit of the, of the New York people. I mean, a lot of New Yorkers get a bad rap here, but the fact is there was a plea made for people to donate blood. And at many area hospitals, there were as many as four to five hour waits, yeah. people lining up. This, this is a city that has taken a number of terrible hits in, in recent time. Uh, but in moments like this, it is truly the best of us that we saw today, and I don't think it's simply New Yorkers. I think we would have seen this most anywhere else. Uh, but they're, they're a tough group out there below us, 30 or uh, 20 floors, and uh, they handled an awful, awful experience today with extraordinary calm, um, to which I think we all are grateful. All right, right now I'm going to check in with James Kalstrom, who was formerly of the FBI. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, Sir, can you explain to the American public how it is possible that four commercial airliners were hijacked in a several hour period? I don't think we can explain that right now, Paula. Uh, I mean, we'll be answering those questions in the future. I can tell you this that everyone in law enforcement and the intelligence agencies. Uh, prayed and hoped that something like this would never happen. It has happened. I thought the president uh, gave a great speech tonight. I was particularly impressed. It's a bit redundant from the other speakers, but, but his discussion of there will be no difference between those that committed this horrendous act and those that supported, harbored, assisted this horrific act. I think that's a very, very key point. 
And as the days roll out, the United States, this great country we all live in, and the heroism that you saw on the streets of New York, uh, I saw that day in and day out in smaller tragedies, and I'm sure we see that throughout the United States. But as the days wear on, uh, the United States and the Allies, if they carry out what the President said, uh, we'll be far better off for it. If you would, sir, though, would you come back to the vulnerability that was exposed today? What, what is the significance that two planes were successfully hijacked from Boston? What is the significance of the fact that all four of these flights were cross-country uh, flights? Well, uh, I mean, I think we can read into that, Paula. I don't know the answers. Uh, it would seem like uh, the interesting and tragic thing is that people would give their lives that could also fly sophisticated airplanes, that they apparently could get on these airplanes through generally, generally good screening techniques. I heard one report that they were carrying knives or box cutters, and that could be. How, uh, how, do, you get th how do you get through security with box cutters on you? Well, I'm not going to go into all the different ways that could happen, and I don't know exactly what happened. I don't think now is the time to try to figure that out. Uh, obviously, people want to know that answer, but I think now let's concentrate on the dead, the families, those that are still alive in the rubble in New York, in the Pentagon, out in Pennsylvania. Uh, let's work like crazy to find out who did this. That's what's going on right now. And let's bring those folks to justice. And let's do what the president said. Let's, not, let's see no difference between those that did it and those that helped it harbored it, assisted it. Let's do that. If you would walk us through the process that begins tomorrow, uh, rescue uh, workers still are not able to penetrate that perimeter area surrounding the World Trade Center because of falling debris, because of smoke. Uh, walk us through what we can expect tomorrow. Uh, more of the same. I mean, I think everybody is uh, 24 hours a day now. I mean, I saw reports just a while back that uh, close to 200 New York City firemen are missing. Uh, 40 or 50 New, New York City police officers are missing. And certainly all the people that are in the World Trade Center are missing. So there's been a valiant attempt already to save lives, and that'll continue. All right, Mr. Kalstrom, thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, right now, Aaron and I are going to hand this back to Wolf, who continues to stand by in Washington. Thank you very much, Paula. And I want to report uh, what a senior administration official is telling CNN, that the President's National Security Council will be convening once again shortly to review what has happened and presumably to, dis presumably to discuss uh, some various options about what is happening. President Bush, of course, will be participating together with his National Security Advisor, Condoleezza Rice, Secretary of State Colin Powell, the Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, and the Vice President Dick Cheney. When we get some information on that, of course, we'll report that as well. But I want to bring in CNN's Greta Van Susteren. Uh, you were at National Airport early this morning when that uh, American Airlines Flight 77 slammed into the Pentagon. What did you see, Greta? Well, let me tell you, first of all, I was on a flight on a runway to go to New York. It was canceled because they said two planes planes had run into the uh, building in New York, so they canceled our flight. I got off the plane. I headed back to my car to come back to work. I was on the rooftop uh, of National Airport's parking lot, which is about two blocks from the Pentagon, and I heard something funny. Well, no, first my husband said to me, we better get out of here, and I thought it was a little bit strange. My husband's acting a little bit like an alarmist. I turned back to look at him. I heard something funny. I looked over his shoulder. I saw something. I'm not sure quite it was, but low level. Then all of a sudden there was silence. Then there was a kaboom, and then smoke came building out, and I knew that it was the Pentagon. The Pentagon's about two blocks, of course, from National Airport, hidden behind some buildings. And uh, there was just smoke and debris flying all over, coming up in the air. Obviously, a very terrible sight. And we're taking a look at some live pictures right now. You can see the fires still continuing at the Pentagon now, some 12 hours later. Uh, what was your first thought, though, when you, when you heard that kaboom? Did you have any sense what was really going on? At that point, I knew there was a big problem. I knew it was the Pentagon, and I knew that something horrible had happened and I could see the magnitude of it and it was really one of terror because we had no idea was there more coming was National Airport next it was only two blocks away cell phones went down I tried two cell phones was having difficulty getting through I finally did get through to CNN but the traffic was tied up you heard plenty of sirens and almost no information till I got in a car and did
did find out what happened. Uh, you know, and always, you know, they, in addition to having to, to witness this, uh, several hours later, of course, I learned that uh, someone who I know quite well, Barbara Olson, who's appeared on this network a number of times and whose husband is a Solicitor General of the United States, was one of the fatalities on the airplane. So, obviously, uh, and many other people, of course, uh, are suffering tonight, but uh, that, of course, uh, you know, is is even more dismay. And all of us, of course, uh, who've worked uh, at CNN, know Bar knew Barbara Olson very, very well in our hearts and our condolences go out to her, her family and Ted Olson, the Solicitor General. Uh, a very, very sad day uh, for the Olsons, of course, for the entire country. Greta, put on your legal hat now. What is going to happen legally right now? Walk us through what we can expect. Well, first, there, I mean, obviously, I mean, I can't tell you what the President of the United States is going to do, but there seems to be at least something the country is going to do. The President, obviously, has indicated the country is going to do something. But assuming that that action is, 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 is done, something is done the President, there's also the possibility of some sort of legal remedy. It's not much of a remedy, but you can all, there, it has happened in the past is that we've gone over and nabbed terrorists, brought them back to this country, and tried them for terrorist acts here on American soil or, or for acts that they've committed against uh, American buildings overseas. And of course, uh, they can get the death penalty if proven guilty. What's interesting about this and what people should know is that oftentimes it's done in a conspiracy charge. And if you have any involvement in a conspiracy, for instance, you just stick your toe in the water of a conspiracy, you're in for the whole thing. So a lot of people can be brought into a conspiracy for almost just a minor act aiding the conspiracy. Not just the ones who were responsible for planning and causing the deaths, but if you in any way just assisted a little bit, you're in for the conspiracy and you could face the death penalty. All right, Greta Van Susteren, thank you very much. Stand by. I want to go back to New York. Uh, Aaron, Paula, and Jeff are standing by. Uh, guys, take it over. Well, thank you. It is uh, another day in Asia already. The Nikkei is open. The Japanese stock market it is already down 5.5% to a 17-year low. This is not unexpected. It is the kind of thing that happens when there is instability in the world and there is instability in the world today, certainly in our world today. I, Jeff, it's, it seems like days ago that we began this. Tell me where you are right now. I was thinking about waking up this morning in a city that was going to have a primary election for mayor and other city offices in a country that was worried about an economy that might or might not be flattening, uh, kids back at school for the first month, uh, at a time when, when the big issues, when big events, when horrible events seemed behind us. That was the political climate we've all thought we'd been in. And we are going to wake up tomorrow in a, just a completely different city and a completely different country emotionally. We wake up to a city tomorrow where the majority of the businesses below 14th Street, down towards the World Trade Center, are shut. Public schools closed, parochial schools closed, all private schools closed. No flights coming in or out of this country. Stock market closed. It's a new reality. And as Jeff expressed earlier on, I think you said it pretty pointedly, our luck ran out. It, it is, uh, when I walked off here for a, a short break um, around 6.30 or so, I thought about my daughter, who's 12 and a half, and I wondered if she, in her school, was taken into the gymnasium as I was in November of 1963, uh, when President Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, it is, I, I remember everything about that moment, and I wondered if she will remember every bit of that moment as well. I wonder. Dece December 7th, 1941, yeah. September 11th, 2001. I think this state may well live in Interior. Larry King Live is coming up in just a moment. Uh, before we go to Larry, we want to take you back to one of those moments today. It happened at the Capitol. Democrats, Republicans, Senators, Representatives gathered uh, on the steps of the Capitol to show that the government was running, that they were there, and the country was strong. Tonight, with the light from 